actually working yet. Yeah, maybe. So over the course of the last year, I would say I have received a number of comments and feedback from several of the board around how do we manage all of the content related to various agenda items, either on committees or at full board of admin. So when we went back and we looked at the number of pages that are presented each month to all of you, you may not be surprised that those pages amount to about 1,100 pages per month that you are all sorting through, trying to read through in a fairly short amount of time. <laughs> so I would say that um, some of the feedback uh, really does fall into three areas. One is um, more links to the content. So some of you have been through these um, decisions in the past, some of you have been on the board for uh, more than a year, y you have a baseline of understanding. So you want to be able to get to information um, that is more relevant to you more quickly and have that happen uh, better through links. The other item I think I've heard from all of you is that you would like to see more options analysis. So as we are presenting uh, decisions before you, uh, the other thing we want to make sure that we're doing is we're signaling those decisions that need to be made uh, far in advance, so 12 to 18 months in advance, for example, the ALM process. Um, I think that also helps the stakeholders. We've been talking to the stakeholders about this Insights project. They are thrilled at the idea of having the policy decisions that would be made by this board, that they get to see those, uh, see that calendar at least a year in advance so that they can do their own stakeholdering work, they can do their own research, they can do their own you know, kind of analysis that they're able to be better prepared to come up and ask questions about it. The other part of the options analysis is that you want to see some of the options that we considered but did not uh, factor into our recommendation. You want to see more of what our thinking was as we landed on the recommendation that would be coming to all of you. And then the third one, which is really what we are going to highlight today, is just an easier way to search um, the content, past content. Uh, for some of the new board members, as a part of the onboarding process, I have also heard many of you ask about major decisions that have been made in the life of this board or in the last five years. How can I access what those might have been? And it's not easy to do that today because you have to remember which month, which committee, which year that those were decided, and you have to sift back through through all of this content. There really isn't a nice search function for you to be able to do that. So the tool we're going to show you today, and Tim is going to be the driver of the tool, but I'm going to turn it over to Doug Hoffner to talk a little bit more about the project and what we've been working on. And then Ann Simpson will also do a connection between the work that we're doing internally with the work that you're all doing with your self-assessment project. So with that, I'll turn it over to Doug. Thank you, Marcy. So um, as she's indicated, Ann Simpson's joining us today. Um, this is really a collaborative effort we've been engaging on for uh, several months in terms of the work that we're doing, um, mm -hmm. how we present information and material to uh, this board and our stakeholders. Um, Tim Taylor, you may not know, he's the uh, Chief Information Technology Officer, Innovation Officer, excuse me, and his team, and, and he has developed this functional prototype we'll walk through in, in a few minutes. But I want to highlight a few of the things um, why we're bringing this to you now, and Marcy's alluded to this, the amount of uh, significant amount of material that comes before you every month, um, the 1,100 pages of material minus the admin hearings, um, we thought it was a great time to, to look at how we do our business, how we strategically provide information to you um, based upon feedback that we've heard over the last few years. We do have a, a, a few new board members, and we think it's, it's, it's a perfect opportunity to, to make that transition. Um, as Tim will go through the demonstration later today, we really want to get your feedback. Um, we'd love to have the questions. Um, raise your hand if you have them as we go through the, the demonstration um, so we can kind of knock those out and then see what other features you might like to see um, based upon how the work that you've been doing um, or will be doing in terms of um, reading up on the policies and the strategy, um, how that might impact the organization. So um, we're looking at a better way to present information for you. Uh, we want to signal what these decisions are, when they're going to be, um, not just in a month or two, but six months, 10 months, 12 months out. So there's a, a very uh, deliberate process and timing for, for all of you as well as our stakeholders to understand what those decision uh, points of time will be as we move through this, uh, the next upcoming uh, strategic work that we're doing, whether it's in the investment office, as, as Ben alluded to yesterday in the review he's doing, uh, all of the healthcare policies that were discussed today, as well as other things within the organization that, that roll up to um, the work we do as CalPERS. So the goals um, that we're going to talk about today is the alignment of all the documentation um, we have in, in the organization in terms of policies um, 
the, the material itself, historical content, how to search back to see what we've been doing for the last two years, um, you know, and schedule that forward as well through a, a, a strategic calendar that can put us out another four or five years into the future. So really have a, a, a broad view as to what's going to be happening over the, the next few years. An easier and more intuitive way to, to get that information at your fingertips, better filtering, better sorting, better, better ways to gather that data. Um, the creation of a strategic calendar that I mentioned before, and really a more effective way to, to manage that content. And so with that, um, we've got a new uh, functional prototype that Tim will demonstrate. Um, it'll tie us various policy items that um, you've probably read about in, in, in looking at some of the historical content. But why don't I turn it over to Tim now, let him start walking you through what that looks like functionally, um, and we'll talk about it. And we've demonstrated this based on our asset liability management framework. Um, it's one of the, the most significant pieces of, of policy work that this board does, and we think that it's, this is a good proxy for how we could look at the other policy decisions that are coming before CalPERS over the next few years. And with that, I'll turn it over to Tim Taylor. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Uh, I want to give you a quick uh, insight into Insight, our platform for making it easier for all of you and the stakeholders and interested parties to be able to uh, find relevant information as it comes to board governance activities. Um, as Marcy had mentioned, Doug had mentioned, currently there's a, a tool in use, uh, Diligent. Uh, it, it's a pretty powerful tool, but it does have some shortcomings. Basically, it creates a virtualized version of a physical binder. So it wasn't long ago we would actually produce hard copy binders of all the agenda items. They would be rolled up under an agenda, and we'd have these thick reams of binder materials that would be shared. We moved that to an electronic platform a few years ago. And while it's useful, it still does lack some ability um, that would make it easier for board members and stakeholders to find the information that they want. Basically, we create something virtual, but then it doesn't have an inter interconnectivity with, with other aspects. We lose the genealogy of decisions. We lose the ability to quickly find things. And that's what the Insight platform is attempting to bridge that gap. So again, as Doug said, if you have any questions at any point, just raise your hands. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to answer on my tee, so I have a tendency to maybe get into the weeds. So keep me honest. Insights Designed is an open uh, source system that we've been developing in-house. Um, we've taken into consideration a lot of the feedback we've been receiving um, from various folks. We took a look at Diligent, we took a look at the content, and it's driven currently by uh, someone authenticating, and once we identify who you are, then you, we're able to present data to you. So this is a functional prototype. It does have some real data in it. What we've done is harvested active, or I'm sorry, open agenda items from the past two years from previous board uh, committee meetings. And that's what we've populated the system with. We've also taken an attempt at identifying milestones in the next five years of when certain things might be occurring to kind of demonstrate the functionality. So while it is a functional prototype, a lot of the stuff will work very well. There may be some instances where it's not perfectly clean, you might see a little bit of, uh, of some errors or some admissions. It's purely because we're in a development instance. So I apologize, I'm not sure how much insight has been shared over the past few days in regards to understanding uh, the powers that uh, a board possesses in governing our policies, et cetera. So I'm aware that Moving forward, we're exploring this notion of identifying specific powers that you as board members possess. Uh, for example, set investment beliefs. This is a very specific power that is reserved by the board uh, that is associated with a specific committee. In this instance, it's the investment committee meeting. And that specific power is categorized in one of four cat uh, power categories. And those power categories are set, approve, conduct, and oversee. So at a really high level, the four things that you are asked to do most often is to set and approve and conduct and oversee events. So what we did is we went through, again, we did an inventory of all the agenda items for 2017, 2018, for each individual item and the corresponding attachments, we associated those with a specific power reserved. So for example, if you were to look down here where it says approve significant financial policies in the first quarter of 2018, there was an agenda item regarding the amortization policy and there were supporting attachments for it. Diligent 
what it does currently is it'll provide you the agenda item for FAC for that particular period, and you would find this item 5D. A lot of times you just have the attachments for supporting material. You don't have any other insights into the significance of that or how did that decision come to be. So what this platform does is while we're authoring content going forward or even historically, we would have the ability to identify complementary pieces of material or supporting materials that assist you in understanding more specifics around that particular agenda item. So for example, in this one, we could reference you to the current active version two policy and the date that it was ratified. We can link you to the meeting minutes, for example, if there was value of that. So you can see the context of the meeting and how that was ratified. We can even bring in external links such as our solid foundation for the future article where we talk about the importance of amateurization. And this is just a minor example. Um, this is driven by the content. So the more content we have and the more connections we're able to make between materials, the better we can inform you and provide you with the information that you need in order to answer the questions that you might have. So as you can see across 2017, 2018, we've got a lot of dots all within the asset liability mix policy group. We also have the policy group pen, uh, pension and uh, health benefits management and also enterprise performance management. And again, each of these policy groups have various specific powers that tie to the charges of those policy groups and then those committees within. So if you look out ahead, we've populated out some activities that might be occurring in the future with a regular cadence. So setting total fund and asset class policy benchmarks. We have the total fund statement of investment policy. This is an activity that will occur annually. For the sake of this demonstration, we're saying it would occur, it would occur annually in the first quarter of each year. This will then allow us or allow you to be able to anticipate things that are coming up and then we'd also be able to, as that date approach, approaches, we'd be able to provide additional content or instruction or other things of interest that would pertain in the specifics of that particular agenda item as it approaches. So when you have all these dots, it can be kind of crazy. As Marcy had mentioned, we get a lot of these agenda items and it's pages and pages and pages and sometimes it's difficult to find something right now. You're sifting through trying to recall a particular meeting when something was discussed. We actually provide two ways of fine-tuning your view into these agenda items or these topics of discussion. We have the search capability. Oh, is there a question? Just, no? Okay. 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 Should I get nervous every time I yep, see you? Margaret, um, I think they're prepared to take questions yeah. as they go, so please feel free. Sure. So um, sometimes at the board we're given handouts at the day of the meeting, mm -hmm. so they're not actually attached right now in Diligent, How, would those be uploaded as well? So there's a lot of features in here that we're able to, uh, to assume that we'd be able to replicate. Again, we're doing all open stuff. At some point, we'll be doing, we'll pursuing close as well with all the security measures. There will be additional things like you pointed out that we haven't accommodated in the happy path model. But in the, the what model? The happy path model, the ideal state, right? Okay. Something that we're expecting okay, to come into the system. Called that, all right. But in that situation, we'd be able to sit down and understand that particular use case or that, that, that business instance, and then we'd be able to, to figure out a solution that would be amenable to. I, I to think folks. the simple answer is yes. We would be able to upload those documents here okay. uh, for future reference. Yes. Will yeah. we put transcripts on here too for us to sort? If it's all in one place, it's great. I know the transcripts, we can get them now, but if they're all in one place, it's very yes. helpful. So when we go look at the agenda item, we could also, especially for the new board members who maybe weren't here a year ago, and for me especially, going back three years, I could look to see what the conversation was about, say, changing the regulations on uh, elections, right? And so it's helpful to attach those as well. I just don't know how big the, uh, you know, the file server is for this. I assume it's massive. Yeah. Um, but, and then the other one is I'm glad to hear about closed session materials being on there. Again, the question would be about handouts, making sure those would get on there with appropriate, you know, retina scan and DNA, whatever you need to get us permission to do that. And then hopefully we'd have some sort of, um, I see search up there where that little bar is clicking. So, you know, if we, put something in there, I don't know, CIM, see what would come up, 
you know, I don't know what you've populated in here so far, but it, it, it would be great, or use, using a shift F7 feature, you know, find, something like that, but um, if you think, so is it on every keyword, or would it be just search on the title of the agenda item, or have you decided? It would function like traditional search capabilities to where it would look at all text, it would also look at keywords, wow. and it weights them based upon, mm -hmm. If it appears in a keyword, it gets a little more high weight. If it's a single word in a large document, then it falls further down. Great, I'd like to see that like mathematical formula for that. I'm sure. kidding, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you've mentioned the search engine. That's where I was gonna go next. We've got, we've got all this data and your earlier question about how large is the file system. The intent is for this to be a central repository for everything um, and try to create as many interconnections as we possibly can to where you can find the information more organically. So if I search for Treasury, I will see all the return, all the data that's been returned for Treasury. Um, this would do a look at article name, it would be the full text type stuff. At this point, it's not fully functional, but this is demonstrating the capability, and we'll see in 2017, as part of FAC, there was a treasury analysis and liquidity report that was produced. Another way that you might be able to zero in on information is maybe you don't have a very specific thing you're looking for, but you're looking for things generally speaking. You would be able to apply filters, and this is the filter area. And you can say, show me all the agenda items that came out of FAC by the financial office with an action of information consent. And then when you do that, it'll only reveal those items that fit those categories. And you would see here that in the second quarter as well, we had another treasury analysis and liquidity status report. And just like I showed you before, the supplemental materials, we'd also have the ability to drive in some of our EOM or our enterprise operations map, our KPIs or our key performance indicators. So specific to this one as an example, being fiduciary or responsible, we're looking at GASB timely, uh, GASB 68 timely reporting, coverage ratios, and we'd be able to provide you the specific information here, and then you'd be able to drill down to get additional details if you would like to. Yes, uh, for the non-confidential information, will we be able to access it from our desktops at home? This is a cloud-based solution. It's designed to be able to serve a multiple of, uh, or a large number of audiences of different types. Ideally, um, you would log in. If you're authenticated, you would be able to see your stuff in a secure way wherever you are. Okay. We'd also parlay this to where when things get authored and cleared and finalized, that this would feed into the CalPERS website to share agenda items with external stakeholders as part of the process. And another big benefit we're getting out of this is it's structuring our, our content management practices and it's allowing us to ensure that when we provide this information electronically, that it's adhering to the ADA requirements um, as part of the, the federal accessibility laws. In Diligent, I'm aware today you have the ability to um, perform your own annotations. Um, we've recreated that behavior as well. I can show that. So when you see a particular item, you'd be able to click it, you would see the item in a read-only state. However, if you wanted to do markup for yourself, you would be able to launch the edit option within the application, this is gonna load the PDF and then you would have the ability to go in and perform any sort of highlighting that you wanted to do, um, et cetera. It'll save a copy of your annotation specific to you, no one else would be able to see it. The original remains unchanged. In the event that there's an update and that file needs to be changed, we would change the original file. People would be notified that there had been a change but your annotations would remain intact until you got an opportunity to go in and apply them to the future version if you wanted to. Yeah, go ahead, we also, is there... Hi. Uh, in regards to the note-taking function, is that comments? I can, I can type in notes or handwrite notes? Yeah, it's, uh, it allows the ability to highlight, free circle with a, with a pen, um, you'd be able to insert comments and type your own comments, and, and it's basically information just for, for your use. And is that uh, for 
all the material there as well as closed session? It would have the ability to be used for anything. We would just defer to whatever would be the acceptable practice for stuff. And is that, so it's saved under my account login? Yeah, it would be stored in the repository, the central repository, but it would be encrypted and stored separately and every user that had that capability would have their own store. And everything would be subject to PRA? That would be something that I would defer to a, a subject matter expert. I imagine, closed. yes. I mean, yeah, other than closed session. Other, yeah, okay. Uh, I got a ton of questions, but I'll wait. You may answer them. Sure. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sure. Since this is designed as a cloud solution and it's open source, it doesn't require any installation. It just requires a browser, but it's designed to work on a, on a desktop or a laptop as well as an iPad. However, when you move to an iPad, all this dense information, it starts to get a little bit tight. So what we've done is provided some additional ways uh, allowing you to focus in on those important aspects. By default, we show three years and we divide those years into quarters. If you're working on a nice big screen, you can go out to five years if you need to. You can go down to a single year where we're calling out the individual months and we're dropping in those, uh, those items. You also have the ability to shrink the left side so then you can focus on more information internally. And again, it's our intent to make this tool as useful as possible regardless of the platform. So that's one way we're presenting data. It's a little bit of a paradigm shift. You're accustomed to getting binders and you have your agendas and all the agenda items are spelled out, chronologically listed for those particular days. We also are offering a calendar view. The best part is all this information is centralized into a single content management system. We build different ways of portraying that information to you. So we had one view that showed it to you this way. That same exact information gets shown to you in another way, maybe a way that's more comfortable for you. So from a, uh, from a calendar point of view, we can see in January, we've got three events that are occurring across the 22nd to the 24th, and it's the board offsite today. If I was to go back into December, I would see that board week was the 17th through the 19th, and there was an investment committee meeting, pension and health finance and admin. I could click the finance and admin, and then I would have access to that entire agenda along with all the individual uh, agenda items. And it would follow the same methodology to where you'd be able to click. If you had already made annotations for a particular agenda item and you retrieved it from this way, the annotations would come through because it's coming from that same central repository. On the calendar, can we populate our other activities in that calendar? Like meetings that, meeting with the retiree groups, et cetera? The plan is to have the calendar house all board pertinent stuff, so activities not at an individual level necessary, but that definitely could be discussed. Um, I uh, wanted to add another feature that we see um, this having potential for, and that is um, the onboarding information. And we know at the moment that uh, in, when you join the Board of CalPERS, this is an overwhelming amount of information to absorb. And uh, more than once, I've been asked, well, what did that acronym mean? Or what does that terminology mean? And what we'd like is not only is this going to be your dashboard, your source of all the information that you need so that our board is empowered, as knowledge is power, you need the information to fulfill your role, um, we also want it to be a place where it's going to be um, a, a resource for you in understanding and in uh, uh, getting the help that you need to understand the very different aspects of the organization. Um, and we're going to talk more about this tomorrow when the board's self-evaluation is going to be discussed. But this question about giving you access to the information in the form that you need, when you need it, in order to carry out your powers reserved for the board. This is a really important part of the governance of CalPERS. So I think it's a very exciting project and you getting a chance to look at this, if you like, at the design stage means that you know, Tim and Doug and the whole team is going to be able to take your ideas and your input and really have it tailored for what you need. So um, all suggestions, um, and uh, ideas, opportunities are very welcome.
And just as you had mentioned really quick, um, as an example, onboarding, we just cobbled together, we aggregated a bunch of glossaries that we have available on the internet and the external website created a glossary. And so we'll be able to provide a, a, a common language for you to refer to. So when we say uh, external information, asset, custodian, what does that exactly mean? Uh, and over time, we can get this to where it's actually integrated with a particular agenda item. So as you're looking, if you see a term that more, than off, more often than not needs definition, you would be able to quickly get that understanding. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then we can turn it into a mobile app game and have pop quizzes and just make acronyms fun. I mean, I wouldn't that pictures. be good? Hey? I'm sorry? I yeah. Pictures. <laughs> and pictures too. That's a great suggestion. I got straight A's. I assume I'll do fine in a pop quiz. Um, I am hoping uh, if we could work this out so when we get financial data, rather than have you upload it in a PDF, if we could get it in either Excel format or at least be able to convert that PDF back to uh, Excel. Now, I'm not asking for the CAFR in Excel. Maybe I am. But uh, so maybe some of the smaller things when there's an attachment, um, it would be helpful to have that if possible. Right. Okay. Scott has a spreadsheet for you, Margaret. <laughs> the simulation one, it's actually very slick that will be in here as well. But go ahead, Tim. Okay. Well, we've covered the majority of the high-level functionality. Again, it's a work in progress, and we're continuing to, uh, to add refinements. We want to add additional views to where you can generate a packet for a, particular invest or for a particular committee so you can get all the agenda items bundled. You can have it as a PDF, and then you can print it out as necessary. Um, again, carry your notes forward. Another question uh, over here. <laughs> I'll apologize in advance to the, the rest of the board. A lot of questions. Um, and instead of getting emails from, from your team updating, hey, this is updated, that's updated, will, will we get like little alerts? Or can we set up alerts? Bing! We got a new update for the... So this, this is not a native application. We could set it up to where the system would alert you by way of email or text that something's been pending, but it wouldn't be something that you would install on your iOS device and it no, would no, no, give no, you no, a no. notification. I, I meant within the system itself. Yes. Like you log within on the, and yes. say, hey, you have two... Yeah, I'm and the next time you log in, it would say this item's been updated or yeah, updated since your last view. I'm just trying to save time for, for yeah. your team. Um, is there a way we can, I'm sure there's a licensing issue for different news articles. If, if we all have subscriptions to the Wall Street Journal and you're like, hey, this is good for the guys to read. Can you throw it up there? And then if we all have licenses, can we read that? Oh, sorry. I'm just Say that again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jason. Could you repeat that, please? Sorry. Uh, news articles, pertinent news articles that are that are floating out there. Uh -huh. If we all have subscriptions to the Wall Street Journal, so we're taking care of the licensing. Yeah. Is there something you can throw up there? We'll we'll all be able to see that. So today you're getting an email with a news summary um, that's new within the last uh, month. Oh. And so that's already coming into your inbox, your CalPERS inbox, on a daily basis. Um, and so I don't know that we, I mean, if you think that would be relevant to load into here, but that's coming to you as an alert every day that this is the CalPERS news summary, and then you also have pensions and then healthcare. So you have three categories of news articles that are being presented to you every day, okay. if we're in the news every day, which we usually are. Um, you can answer that. Uh, so instead of the, um, Mr. Fechner, where do you go? Mr. Fechner the other day uh, mentioned that in the back of the, back of the, not, I don't know what it's called, where the, chambers. back of chambers, there's a, a binder of classes or trainings or webinars. Can we include that on here? Pretty please. Yeah, thank, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Perez. This idea that this is the place to go, this is like the Calpers Library. You know, back in the old days where rain or shine, you'd be around there with your library ticket to be able to find everything you need. This is the one-stop shop We'll have everything um, and yeah. to build it out in the way that's going to be useful for you um, and m make it practical to prepare for board meetings but also for education for information for education and yes copyright law always to be followed 
So, um, so yes. And, yeah. Uh, yes, I think, absolutely. Tim, let's check with Tim. <laughs> Tim, I think we could have um, a resource tab of some kind here that would contain all the educational opportunities for the board members to sign up for. That's Definitely. Okay. We've Great. had, uh, so Karen and her team, we've had some discussions. We understand that Diligent houses a lot of resource material, information type of material. Yep. The intent would be we can emulate that and we can even extend the functionality and the interactivity. Slick, because I got a book, it's on my notes, a Pearl book that's fairly thick. Yeah. We, can, we can PDF that because it's out there. We can just yeah. PDF that on there? We have electronic copies of the Pearl. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Um, is there a function on there where we can take notes outside of, outside of the sessions? Currently, no, but there's no reason why if that was a, a, a strongly wanted enhancement that we would, we could pursue that. There's no technical reason why not. Okay. That'd be, for me, I mean, there's less stuff we have to carry around. I know, mm -hmm. I know these are all asks and wishes, but since you you said you wanted them all, so I'm giving them. It keeps it allows me to stay employed, so keep asking. <laughs> all right, yeah. If we can have like an etch a sketch thing where I can where I can take notes and and save them, that'd be great. Um, would this be like a like a two FA where uh, like an RSA key or, or download to our phone? Our typical approach is based upon the sensitivity of the information. Um, we have a, a prescription that we follow to ensure that we have the appropriate security. In this instance, if two-factor authentication was warranted, we would enable it. Um, so on the sensitive stuff, still uh, no, no printing, no screenshots, you can, you can include that on there? Unfortunately, there is not a technological solution that would prevent someone from screenshotting or taking a picture of stuff. Right, like a, from my phone, right, but mm -hmm. I can't uh, control. <laughs> not, not closed session, I think they're, they, they keep that locked down, right? So you, you can't do a physical print on closed session from Diligent today, and I think you would build that same functionality here, but what Tim is saying is it doesn't prevent someone from taking a picture of right. the screen. Right, that's up to us to yeah. be grown yeah. up. We'll be pursuing other uh, solutions to help in, in that regard. Um, when materials being viewed, well, we may watermark it with the identification of the person who's viewing it. So in oh, the event that there was a screen capture or whatnot, it would be watermarked with that information. Perfect. Uh, add the pearl. All right, this one's a big one. In addition to the uh, transcripts, what are the chances of getting like an audio player? And not just where I have to have the computer or the device open, but like a podcast where I can, I can when I'm driving somewhere, I can play the stuff that I didn't hear. Please. <laughs> so one of the ideas that we've been uh, toying with is trying to pair up agenda items historically with the actual YouTube, YouTube. Uh, footage. So if there was a particular agenda item that was covered from 935 until 1015, we would attempt to, to, to treat that as content and then you would be able to view that and then you have the ability to just listen to the audio. You're a stud, man. Uh, is there a, so this is open source. Is your staff having, or is your team having to input all this manually, or is there a, a vendor that's going to convert all that stuff? Because it's a lot of work. So the plan, for the purposes of this exercise, we went through a, a one-time exercise of creating this comprehensive inventory of everything and mapping. Um, we would have to do that for anything that exists in arrears, but going forward, we would change the content management uh, process mm -hmm. to make sure we're capturing all that data and we're associating with the proper powers, et cetera, to where it's just part of the generation of an, a, of an agenda item, and then it's in the system. And then we can continue to refine the metadata or the content attributes if there are additional things that we want to, uh, to rely on the system for. And what's the plan then to, to reverse engineer and go back how many years? Um, it hasn't been decided uh, at this point. Um, we did two years and a few months, or in a month or so. It probably wouldn't be a, a huge lift to go further back. The problem is the further back you go, you're going to lose a little bit of fidelity with all the connections between content because that's a laborious activity. But from what I've demonstrated here, um, there should be no reason why we can't go back five years, six years. Wow, thank you. Um... I just want to make reference to Carrie Amai, who's in the audience, who did a lot of that heavy lifting. So this was really done on the, 
on behalf of the organization and the team members, and she's in the Enterprise Strategy Department's Division, who took this content to populate it. So, um, it, you know, going to go in for his basis, to Tim's point, it would be a lot easier, but it's the rebuilding all of that by every policy item uh, for every committee for every month for multiple years. So that's it's something that can be done. It's just a matter of how much time would that take to do. It's, it's definitely capable of being done, but we did that internally. And this is just one demonstration. Sure. The other one would be um, all health-related items, right? And then the third bucket is really related to enterprise performance. And that captures everything else that this organization does under the same kind of framework and dashboard. Um, so we're not breaking it out by committee at that point. We're really breaking it out by all of that other work and then the searchable and, and, and uh, filter features. So those are the sort of three, three policy buckets that we're looking and engaging on at this point. Um, to cover all the work that CalPERS does. Thank you for acknowledging, Carrie. If, if he's a stud, you're a, you're a stud it. Uh, note taking, comments, highlights. Uh, the, the hearings um, at the end of the. Yeah, third, the administrative hearings. Yes, ma'am. Is there HIPAA issues? Off the cuff, I, I don't think I can answer that question just because I'm not familiar with the content. Um, but e even when HIPAA implications exist, there are technological things we can do to ensure that we're maintaining the appropriate level. Yeah. Um, when, when we get presentations from, from our uh, advisors or from other vendors, uh, yesterday was a perfect example when the, the um, graphs or the, the images they put up there, even, even when I zoom in, and I got decent eyes. I still can't read it. Can we, from now on, say, hey guys, give us the original and we'll, we'll include it in so we can blow it up to where it's. So, quick legible. question to that. Is that something that occurs at, like when we get third party attachments and stuff like that? So, um, there, there is a desire. We, we have a need to ensure that as we provide attachments going forward from an accessibility perspective, um, that we're addressing those as well. And that would be the appropriate time for us to explore those. We should yeah, be providing cool. material and, and easy to read and then also for assistive technology. Awesome. Uh, that was it. Okay. Thank um, you. Bill? Bill? Sorry, Thank if you, you look into this side of the room. I was just naturally turned that way, and sorry. Can't pull this too far. Anyway, I apologize. I had to step out of the room uh, to take a phone call, but so I may. This question may have been asked, but uh, I, I think this can be an awesome tool for us. Uh, I'm a little concerned with how far back we go and the amount of work necessary to do that. I think going forward is uh, this could be really beneficial to to us in our deliberations. But I wonder. How is the tool, first, first of all, the resources you need to be able to do this on a go-forward basis, uh, how much resource? And the other thing is, how, how will, if you can, how will staff use this? Or is this just on top of everything else you do, or will, do you envision this being a tool for you to use as well? You want me to go? I got it. You, you got it? Go take, you you take, I'll do the yeah. second half. Sure. Go for it. Um, the, uh, the effort to populate going forward all the contents, uh, the intent would be, or the anticipation would be, it would actually reduce some effort. Uh, currently, we follow a process where templates are filled out, information is collected, attachments are um, received. Information is manually routed around or sent via email. We don't have things tracked uh, as ideally as we possibly could. This would allow a more structured way of accepting agenda items in a very structured format, prompting for the relevant information. For when I open up the filters and I look at the different office types, you'll see actuarial office, actuarial, you'll see acto, and that's just data entry. Once we get the content management in place, all that stuff will become standard. It's just picking a value. So it should ease that greatly. The routing will be all automated. Errors should be reduced. And as I alluded to before, once this information is in this repository, we can serve it out to, uh, to, for different uses. Internal staff could use it. We can turn on more enhanced features. We could use this to populate the external website. Um, there's, there's just a lot of power that we can do at this point. I think to that point, uh, I think that the team members would love it because it gives you the same uh, capabilities to search and filter that, that the stakeholders and the board would be using as well, right? So someone who's a brand new 
you know, here, let's take Ben. He, he watched a year's worth of videos this last year, right? In the last couple of months, he's watched a full year's of CalPERS board meetings. Our apologies. That could have been fully. <laughs> We're um, very sorry you did that, had to do that. It could, that. That data could have provided in a way that could have been searched, fully connected, um, maybe better use of his time in some respects, but it would have had all the, what, what did we do for the last three years? How did we get here since he's been gone? I mean, so I think for, for the team members, for the stakeholders, for the board, um, it's a great capability. I think the question is, so you mentioned resources, is we wanted to first, you know, as we did this functional pilot, see if the group liked it, right? We don't want to take any further steps if it's, if we're getting thumbs down or, or, or you know, so really we'd take an assessment of what that looks like. We have the conversation tomorrow with, 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 with Ann and with Carrie Dominguez and, your own, you know, assessments of um, the surveys, et cetera, but um, we could come back with that because as all these inputs come in, we want to we want to look at what that looks like to, from a cost perspective it, as well. Any um, downsides? What's that? Any downsides? Well, it's, you know, I think it's changed management. We're doing things differently. Um, mm -hmm. I think you got to work people through that. They have to understand that the potential value associated with what that would be like for them in the future. There's going to be some effort to Tim's point, particularly on the historical side, but once you get, you know, you cover that, um, really, it's just how we do business going forward differently in a more connected and, I think, usable uh, fashion that's really more intuitive to how we want to search um, for data in other, in other ways. And this is really how we would do it from, a, from the content we, we create at CalPERS. So. Since this is uh, individual uh, specific, uh, can you include electronic expense report here? Travel expense report? Expense report. We have to fill out the, every time we, even when I come to this board meeting, I have to fill out, hand write these reports and submit them. Can we have an electronic version in this doc, in this tool? Well, we're, we're, we're in the process. I say, Tim, talk about your other projects. <laughs> <laughs> And Karen, Karen's, keep, Karen's keeping me honest. We've implemented a, um, a travel request and expense claim system that's per, uh, currently in pilot mode within CalPERS. It's currently just with FINO and IT. We've been testing it for a while. We've been uh, working closely with Karen's area to, to gear it up for your, for your guys' use. Um, we haven't, we've been a little distracted with things like this. So Karen's been keeping me honest, but that's coming, and the plan would be um, that uh, they would be complementary and integrate, and we're looking at e-signature and w w trying to make it a better world for you. <laughs> okay, uh, Frank and then Dana. So quick comment and a question. Um, so having served on numerous, many, many boards for the past 30 years, and have a garage full of boxes, uh, I really I appreciate and want to commend the team and the visionary because I think uh, this is going to be great. Now, recognizing you know that we're going to have input and we'll uh, we'll be a work in progress, but it's it's a awesome. Uh, I'm excited about that. That said, um, any idea when uh, we are going to roll it out or expected date or how soon can we see uh, at least the initial. Uh, the initial phase. Doug warned me that this question would be asked. Um, to, to his earlier point, um, I believe there will be a little bit more discussion. Um, I just need a better understanding of what the historical stuff will be and then what would be a minimally viable set of functionality. I think we've got some core stuff here. So if we're not too far off the mark, um, by the end of the of the calendar year at the latest to at least get something up for you guys to use and our our model is get you something that you can be productive with and then let us iterate uh, through enhancements so you're not waiting for perfection but we give you really good and then we're constantly refining so that would be in the intent but i want to i want to caution that um i just we need a little bit more details before i can commit security will be paramount uh, because this will be cloud-based uh, so we want to make sure that we get that 100 percent right uh, Dana. And okay, thank you. Um, just a comment, which what Marcy opened initially, I'm personally a board member. Rather than getting 1,100 pages, I'd rather get the executive summary. I don't know how my fellow board members feel about that, but uh, to me, I, you know, 
producing all that is, uh, I'd just rather have executive summaries and links if I needed something. So I don't know, is that something we vote on or how does it work or? Yeah, I, I think um, tomorrow, I don't know if, Anne, if you want to answer this question as it yeah. comes up related to the self-assessment. Yeah, no, thanks very much. I think um, the self-evaluation that the board has undergone has been really thorough and the findings are going to be presented tomorrow in the morning. Um, you'll have the findings at seven-ish in the morning. So I hope over breakfast you'll be flipping through all the good stuff that's come, come out of this process. The issue about getting information which is timely, relevant, gives both sides uh, of a story with data that you can understand, this really came, uh, we'll, we'll be coming to that issue tomorrow. I don't want to uh, uh, preview what Carrie Dominguez will be sharing with you, but um, it, this to me is a governance project. It's about transparency, and therefore ultimately accountability of the board. And um, I think it's going to really be a wonderful tool to strengthen you as a board in your governance role. Um, so it's really important, as Tim said, that you know we don't let the best be the enemy of the good, but it gets built out to meet your needs. So we'll have more discussion about that in the morning, but um, when you get the findings file in the morning, take a look. I'm and and we will be asking, I think part of the presentation tomorrow will be for you to give us direction on what you want us to work on and bring you back options. And this could be one of the areas that you say, please, please bring back some options that address these issues. And so Anne will be asking you to, to do that at the end of the session tomorrow. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, Teresa. Just really quick, I wanted to um, thank our CalPERS staff for doing this and Mr. Taylor, I, I appreciate it. I also really appreciate that we did this in-house. In-house. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's very rare that you see a state agency put together a new program in-house or several new programs, it sounds like, besides this one. So I'm um, very pleased to see that we're using our own employees to do this work. So thank you very much. I guess if there's no further questions, I think we're done for the day. <laughs> but um, we, we still want to get your input. Yeah. If there's other things that come up that you have other thoughts, you know, please, let's have the following conversations after tomorrow. Um, tomorrow as well, we'll be here. So I think the more of these things that pop up as you go through the, the material you, you look at today, you know, we're looking for that feedback. Because okay. that, that'll Tim, be you... something that, that serves you. So okay. we appreciate that opportunity. Tim, did you take notes on uh, some of the feedback on functionality so that we can respond back? I Christian did. Okay, Christian did. Okay, we'll, we'll respond back to, to the board. Yeah, well, the, the final thing uh, then is anybody wanting to move a motion to keep the 1,000 pages of paper? <laughs> Maybe improve and increase the number? No? Yeah. It sounds like that's a, a yeah. <laughs> support for, for the project. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Marcy and the team. Uh, it's great to see the improvements the team has made. Uh, and that concludes our meeting for today. We had some outstanding discussions and learned a great deal from our own experts uh, as well as our visiting uh, presenters. So let's take a moment and give everybody all day a great day. <laughs> and thanks to all of you uh, for your attendance and being and your continued interest and acti active participation in, in these uh, events. So. Tomorrow's session will focus on board governance and fiduciary training. So with that, Karen, you want to give us the time? Sure, and for our audience and for those uh, board members and execs in the room, tomorrow's session will be at 9 o'clock back here in this room. And for members of the board and our executive team, be sure to fill out your surveys. If you need some help finding those surveys on diligent board books, please see me after this meeting and enjoy your evening. Thank you, everyone.